Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, welcome. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you, Betty. I want to thank everybody for uh, helping set up. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Betty, for all of your work. Set up. Thank you, Paul. Michael, thank you for pulling all of this together. John. Um, my name is Kirk Spradford, and I'm the community organizing manager at TNPC. Uh, but more importantly, um, I was a resident of this building, um, lived here as a friend and neighbor of Marvis's for 12 years, and we, we laughed together, hung out together. Um, we organized uh, <laughs> against the world together. You know, there was always a fight, right? We were fighting for the community, fighting for the neighborhood, fighting for the residents of the Tenderloin neighborhood. And he has a 40-year history of being that person who was fighting for this community. And um, if you had anything to do with city planning or developments or uh, uh, land use in the Tenderloin neighborhood, you most certainly came across Marcus. Um, he was uh, an integral part of all of those decisions for this neighborhood. And to this, to, right up until the end, he was um, emailing the planning department or the city, you know, the, the, the city, <laughs> the city offices two, three times a week, right? Like, he, he always CC'd me everything, so I always knew what he was up to. And, and um, he was plugged in, engaged, um, the entire 40 years you know, that he was here in the Tenderloin, and certainly the entire time that I knew him. And I know many of us are really gonna miss him, but I, I'm really grateful to everyone that came here today. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna have, uh, a few speakers today will have a chance to have a little music, and of course we have some food, so please stick around and, and, and um, break some bread with us at the end. Uh, I want to point out that we have some memorabilia, um, just sort of acknowledging Marcus's history in the community a little bit up here. Uh, we also have a board over here on the side. Um, if you get a chance and have a minute, grab one of the markers and just leave a little message to Marcus on there for collecting little notes for you. And uh, please feel free to stick around and, and share some stories after. Um, I really am grateful for the time that we had here even beforehand. Uh, I already heard some really great stories this morning from folks who were sharing some, some, some neat stories, and I really appreciate that. <coughs> so um, I'm gonna introduce now um, our first speaker. Um, Father John Harden, he's from St. Boniface Church, and he's going to uh, open us up with a welcome and prayer. Thank you. This is my third, third time at uh, St. Boniface uh, of living there and uh, being involved with St. Anthony's. One of the things that I, I found so very important, I think this is true of all of us, that we want to belong. We want to belong to someone, some group, so that we feel that we are important and that we're all children of God. So that's the most important thing, you know, politics aside, all of that. We want to feel like we are part of a community. And we here in the Tenderloin are a community, you know and we support and we love one another. That's the most important thing. And being successful, as Mother Teresa says, is to be faithful. And when we are faithful, we are successful. So I'd like to open our memorial service to Marvis with an opening prayer. Let us pray. God of loving kindness, listen favorably to our prayers. Strengthen our belief that your son has risen from the dead and our hope that our servant Marvis will also rise again. We ask this in your name, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. One of the things I also tell people uh, who grieve the loss of family or friends is we normally pray for them, but now we pray to them. Marvis, 
is in the hands of God. So you want something, pray to Him. Thank you, Father. Um, next up, um, we're going to have a reading of Psalms 23 from uh, Betty Duran. Oh, there you are, Betty. David. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley, of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Thank you, Betty. Um, and you, you may have had the opportunity to pick up the, we had the words for Amazing Grace. And we're going to have a performance today. Uh, Faye from uh, St. Pat Patrick's Church, excuse me. Faye McAtonier is going to play Amazing Grace for us. We have someone who um, many of you might know. We haven't seen him in the neighborhood a lot here lately, but he certainly has a long history in this community and a long history in this neighborhood and was such a loved um, uh, companion, friend, uh, co-cohort, you know, co-conspirator with, with Marcus um, for many, many years. So would you please welcome the retired commander from the San Francisco Police Department, former captain of the Tindall Station, uh, Joe Garrity. I mean, uh, Michael had emailed me to speak today. I'm totally honored about uh, Marvis. I've known Marvis for many, many years. And uh, I've been here many years. Uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, I don't know if it'll happen again. I was a patrolman, sergeant, lieutenant, captain, and then I became a commander. And I, I went to the Vatican downtown, as I said. <laughs> but Marvis and I go back many years. I first met Marvis uh, many years ago in front of the, the Ritz Club. So you had the Ritz Club, the Club Taylor was on Taylor Street, was a bar, then you had the Ritz Club, then you had the Hotel Ritz, and 
Connie's was across the street, was another, was a merchant seaman bar, and Marvin was out there. And you know, Mar Marvin had battle addictions, you know, at that time. And so it was like, hey, Marvin, you, gotta, you can't sniff glue out here. It's kind of against the law. But and nowadays, it doesn't matter. As I walked up here today, it kind of broke my heart a little bit. I was walking up the street. Uh, I saw a couple of people doing fentanyl, and it's kind of broke my heart a little bit because we worked so hard down here to keep this area clean. It was sad. And as I walked in next door at 232, there was a young woman and then there was another fellow there, an Afro-American kid, and they, they got, the woman had was out. I want to use the radio car drive right by. I don't want to wave it down and be a pain in the butt to somebody. You know, I'm an old, I guess my wife says, uh, uh, she always reminds me it's the 21st century. It's not the 20th century. It's not 1990. So, I mean, I asked the guy in the lobby here, you know, we go down and got some water, water for it. The guy did say she did some Oxycontin. So hopefully the ambulance would come and help her out. So it was just a different area. The Tenderloin has always been an area, I always said, when I was up working down here with, group of people at the Tenderloin, the officers and the sergeants, and it was, we had more of a community-based balance with everybody, you know, from Hastings to Salvation Army to the Glide to uh, St. Boniface to uh, St. Anthony's to the Women's Children's Center to the Bodecker Park, the kids. And Mark was always helpful in that. He's always in community organizations with Michael and John Nolte. They're very helpful for what we had to do down here. And, you know, this area, I always say, and I hate to say it to Father uh, Harden, uh, there's saints and sinners in this area. People forget that, not the police especially. So keep that in mind. And there's a bit of a big influx. And you know, today it's I'm kind of honored to be here with uh, Father John. He's back at Saint Boniface. Uh, if you always want to know, always a priest that says O F M on the back part of his name. That was Order Friar Minor. That's the Franciscans. So they're the the boots on the ground for the Catholic Church. You know, remember that. So and then Brian Sheehy's from Future Bars. He owns a lot of places around here, uh, as I used to call it, saloons, saloon, old, saloon keeper. And then there's the heart, there's the uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi of Star Wars here, Don Fawk. <laughs> I won't mention the Evil Empire. Uh, that's TH, THC, he's TNDC, right? And then you got the heart and soul, well, the, the soul of UC Hastings over there, uh, Dave Stewart, who's the the CF, what is your title? CFO? CFO still. CFO. Yeah. Okay, important titles here. OFM, CFO. I can't keep them all in place. But Marvis was a unique individual. And we used to do this a long time ago. I like to mention Marvis because he's passed away. And then Merton Crane was a guy who lived across the street. But we had other people. If people remember uh, Malton Manor, uh, the Manor House. Mimi ran the restaurant there for many, many years. Yeah, Mimi. Mimi, she yeah. was a saint. Yeah. So we had a kind of like a account for some of the people in the tenement that were seniors, people, you know, the sergeants would pass the hat around the lieutenants, and only two lieutenants ever didn't want to pay, but we'd throw some bucks in and then we go pay the accounts. Before Marvis met Loretta, I said he had some issues and he was skinny. So we went down there, I was telling uh, Michael Nolte, and I was telling Curtis earlier, Marvis was in there, and guys, Marvis was skinny at one time. So we had to get the bill one time. You know, Marvis was putting weight on, putting weight on, putting weight on. Marvis, you know, kind of like triple everybody else's. You know, he was going there four or five, six square meals a day. He was because you know, his addiction was over with, and so you know, the diabetes and heart disease doesn't get you. I mean, the drugs would have, you know. But Marvis was one of those people. And he met Loretta, and then Ken Segru, sergeant. Since he's passed, he's passed away. Uh, we, he was the best man at their wedding, Marvis, and I was. I we went down the flower market. I guess I was the flower boy or flower <laughs> flower sergeant or lieutenant. <laughs> I got the flowers for Marvis. So Marvis was unique. And, you know, a lot of things he did with the community groups, there's the, the long list that uh, Michael did and the various, he, he did, it was kind of, he, they did a lot of work for the community, Marvis did. But I think the best thing is that, how many remember when Marvis was, used to be out there with his yellow helmet and orange vest directing traffic? Anybody remember, did anybody ever see him do that? Probably this is more in the 90s and early 2000s. So he, he was like a block captain or a 